Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Thanks. While we're on the subject, what's the easiest way to get rid of birds and keep them from living in your barn? Her brain? Look at that, she does have a brain. Alright, what are we doing today, Pinky? <laughs> <laughs> we're not taking over the world. Nope. Just the barn. <laughs> no, we're gonna build pins. Alright, so you can see that we've already built some. It was very rainy and loud in here yesterday, so didn't do any recording. But I'm gonna show you how, how we do it right here. And it very simple design, but they are very sturdy. These ones aren't set up because you can see that's not set up back there because it's got materials in the way I gotta move. We're just getting everything together and set to make sure that we have what we need and that it's actually gonna function before we go through and build. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is measure out how much of the fencing we need. I'm doing it the easy way, just by putting this on here. I'm gonna burn, Oops. burn about the width of a, well, the narrow end, an inch and a half, because there's gonna be a board that goes up right here. You'll see, it'll make more sense. Then I'm gonna come down here, and I know that I need three and a half inches left over because this has got to overhang onto the other. So I can easily cut it right here and I'm going to have left over. I'll have to cut it back, but I'd rather have it a little too long and be able to trim it. <clears throat> On this end right here, because we've got this full panel, this is the top because it's the bigger squares, as you can see in the fence, and that's our bottom. All we're going to do right here, we're going to simply set it to where if I had because when this goes together, it'll be a two by four running upright like this. So I want to set it to where this fence is not going to be in the way of me putting this on. So all I'm going to do is pull it down a little bit to where it touches. And then I'm going to put it in the center of this two by four that runs that way. And you're going to see why here in a second. We're going to do the exact same thing on that side. So we're going to do this all the way down, so basically every fourth one, so we have a staple here, and then we'll count one, two, three, four, put another staple there, continue this all the way down, making sure that we keep this wire, this horizontal wire, in the center of the board. You're going to see why here shortly. So this is where the next panel is going to overlap on the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just bend it back for a second, because that's the overlap. This is my upright stud. And that's how much, that's where my fencing needs to end, or the panel needs to end, is right here. Mark it with something. <clears throat> so since I have my line there, I know that's where my end board will be. I'll move my staple. You can see this line right here that we scratched in. I'll put my last staple right here, so it's real close to it, and I'll bend this up away from the board for the time being, and then I'll put the end one in, and we'll staple it. So take the boards that Christy cut at 39 inches, and these are gonna go on the ends. So we turn the boards upright that are going across with the fence attached to them currently. And get this in here. Well, that's actually not too bad. Usually we have to get them in there with the hammer. Depends on how bad the board. So if these boards are warped, this one's got a little bow in the middle, so the center's gonna be hard. And that one's not bad. But we, Chrissy cut all these with boards that we had left over and she used the best ones and most of them are actually really good. This is the first one we've actually had that was warped, but it'll be all right. And then she cut all these at 39 inches. She cut these at 10 feet because this is where we needed it to be on that end. And then there's overlap that you're going to see here shortly. So I'll put screws in the ends right here and here. And then we'll attach this fence with the same staples. We'll attach it here and probably here to make sure that this is good and tight. But you can see that the, yeah, the boards are bowing in right now when I pull on it, but once we put the other pieces in, it won't. So like I said, the, on the middle ones, they're a little harder sometimes, the, especially if the boards bowed in or if it's a really long pin. 
Basically, all I do is I take a flat pry bar. So see how I've got this vertical wire right here, how it runs with the board. I do that on purpose because there's going to be another board that gets put behind here and I'll sandwich this together. And this also makes it to where the fencing is supported in another spot. So instead of being supported every 10 feet from on like that end and on that end, it's supported every four feet on this one. So this one will be really tight. And this one needs to be because this is the one that's going to have our, not necessarily troublemakers, but the lambs and the moms that are having a hard time bonding or anything like that. So the, we don't want the lamb to be able to get out because then she gets away from mom and she can't eat. But we also don't want the mom to get out because sometimes when the moms get separated, even though the pens right next to them are gonna have other animals, they still want to be with other animals. They are a herd animal. So it's, it almost puts them into a depression whenever you separate them. So you wanna avoid that. Christy and her dad counting out the next set of fencing. So we already have it. Basically, this is how the fencing ends up though. This will be, so we've got the two boards sandwiched together to hold this. So now, no matter what I do, right, I can't pull it out of this. All I do is I put the top, so these two, I'll put them in, do the same thing on that end. So this top board will be attached. And then we'll bring the other board, we'll put it up against it, and we'll put two screws in going down. And that's to sandwich this together. And then we'll put the two screws in on the end. If you don't, if you put these two screws in on the end first, it won't sandwich it well and it won't hold it as tight. So yes, it does have play in it and that's okay because they're not going to be able to push it and break it and bust out. Let me show you how these go together now. If something happens to me, she was the last person. <laughs> This is what we've been using to light our flag at night. So, as you can see, one, it's an eyesore because it's up here. Two, it goes across the driveway and we drive across a bunch. It's a matter of time before this cord's gonna get messed up. So I went ahead and picked up some supplies. We're gonna run an underground line and uh, add a circuit basically so that we can have our light over here to keep that lit. Because let's face it, it looks bad when you're a soldier and you're not treating the flag like it's supposed to be. The flag code says it's got to be lit during inclement weather and during the night or it has to be taken down. So we're going to make sure we do the right thing. Let's get started. We need that. Try to turn this off and make it safer. Uh, that one. Unlike the water line where we could put it on the subsoiler and pull it through the ground, I'm not going to be able to do that with the wire, obviously, because I'm putting it in a conduit, PVC conduit. So I have to dig a little bit by hand, and then we'll be able to put it in. And now we should have a lit up flag. 